In this video, we'll be looking at covalent bonds, in particular, how to draw dot and cross diagrams. Now, before we begin, here's a few things we need to remember. These bonds only occur between non-metals, and we find them on the right-hand side of our periodic tables. Each covalent bond counts as one shared pair of electrons, which means one covalent bond is one pair of electrons, and two covalent bonds is two pairs of electrons, meaning there's four electrons in total. Here's a few helpful tips. We only need to draw the outermost shell of our atom, and we can find this out by looking at the group number. So for example, carbon is in group four, so it has four outer electrons. Oxygen, group six, so six outer electrons. And then one final thing, even though hydrogen is sometimes found on the top or the left-hand side of the periodic table, it counts as a non-metal. Now, the example we're going to use in this video is chlorine. Chlorine's formula is Cl2. Now, if we just split this up into things we're going to think about and things we're going to actually do on our test, the first thing I'm going to think about is what elements we have. Well, Cl2 is going to have two chlorines. The next question I ask myself is, what group is it in? Well, I can look on the periodic table and quite easily find out it's in group 7. Now remember, if it's in group 7, it's also going to have 7 outer electrons. And then the final question I ask myself is, how many more electrons does it need to complete its shell? Now, to do that, we have to think back to our rules when drawing atoms. The first electron shell closest to the nucleus can hold a maximum of 2, and every other shell after that can hold a maximum of 8 electrons. We only need to be concerned about that first shell when drawing hydrogen atoms in our covalent bonds. Otherwise, every element needs eight electrons to complete its shell. In this case, our chlorines each have seven electrons, so therefore they need one more electron each to complete their shell. Now, here's the next part that we actually need to do for our test. So we draw two rings overlapping, just like a Venn diagram, and then we start adding our electrons. I'm going to start with the first chlorine. It needs one electron, so I put one dot in the middle. Now, we started off with seven electrons, and it's shared one of them, which means it only has six more electrons for itself. These six electrons go on the outside shell of the chlorine. Now, we're going to do the same thing with the other chlorine. It needs one more, so one goes into the middle, meaning it has six more on its outer shell. And there we've completed our dot and cross diagram for chlorine. Just keep in mind, we use dots and crosses for each individual atom to show where the electrons have actually come from. Now that we've looked at an example, here's one for you to try. Hydrogen. Now a hydrogen molecule consists of two hydrogen atoms. And I've started you off by drawing the outer shells for both. Use the previous example, which is in the top right hand side, to help guide you when drawing your own. You have one minute to complete this example. Let's see how you've done. Now, just by looking at the formula, I know that hydrogen has two hydrogen atoms and each hydrogen is in group one, which then means they have one outer electron each. Remember, when drawing our hydrogens, they need two electrons to complete their shells. Therefore, they need one more electron each. Now, as we did previously, I'll take the first hydrogen atom 
And because it needs one electron, we put one in the middle. It started off with one electron and it's shared one. Therefore, it has no more for itself. And it's a very similar case with the other one. It needs one. So one goes in the middle and it has no more electrons for itself. That there is our completed dot and cross diagram for a hydrogen molecule. Now that we've completed two examples together, here's a chance for you to get some independent practice for yourself. Here are six examples for dot and cross diagrams. You've been given the outer electron shell for the first three, as you sometimes are in your GCSE tests, but you haven't for the next three. Give yourself the next five minutes to try and complete these, and then we'll go through the answers together. If you finish earlier, just skip ahead. I'll see you in five.
Now that you've had some time, let's see how we've done. Here's the completed dot and cross diagrams for those six examples. Pay close attention to that third example there, oxygen. Each oxygen is in group six, so it needs two more electrons to complete its shell. So each oxygen has placed two electrons in the center, leaving them each with four to place on their individual outer shells. That there is a double covalent bond because we have two pairs of electrons. Right, so let's summarize. Remember, these covalent bonds only occur between our non-metals and we find them on the right-hand side of our periodic table. Don't forget about that hydrogen. The group number tells us how many outer shell electrons. Whenever hydrogen is concerned, it only requires two electrons to complete its shell. Every other element requires eight electrons. Keep those points in mind and you've mastered drawing dot and cross diagrams. If you have any questions, just leave them down below and I'll do my best to get back to you.